Honor to yes, God. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, and we thank him today for the blood of Jesus. We give precious honor to this great apostle of God. And ain't nothing like having a worshiping wife until the Lord's worshiper put your hands together for Apostle Wayne T. Jackson and Dr. Beverly Jackson. People don't recognize, but what creates an atmosphere for miracles is when what's in the head flows down to the body. So what we're feeling in this place is not a Juanita Bynum anointing. What we're feeling in this place is a man of God who gave God permission in his mind to build God a house for him to dwell in. And for that, we ought to give God one more praise. We ought to give God one more praise. And to all of the pastors, and the leaders that make up this great fellowship and to the body of Christ that is watching and listening worldwide we give God praise for you you may take your seats in the presence of the Lord get your Bibles if you would and go with me to John the fifth chapter and those of you the Lord Drop something in my spirit on this morning. And as I came in and Bishop and I began to converse, I saw some things in the Holy Ghost. And I am learning that I am not called to hype people. I am called to help people. And I know that the Lord uses sometimes the foolish things to confound the wise. So I saw t-shirts and shirts laying on this altar. Somebody that you've been praying for. Somebody that you've been believing God for. I was instructed to have you to bring a point of contact and lay it on this altar. Bring a t-shirt that your son or your brother wear. If you got to run by their house and they look up at you and say, what you doing here? I just came to see how you doing. So can I borrow one of your t-shirts and lay it on the altar? Because I still believe in the word of God that said, and God wrought special miracles by the clothes that the men of God wore on their body. Being that this house is a representation of the body of Christ, we're going to let the altar wear their garments. And when you take that garment off of this altar, God is going to work a miracle. Somebody don't believe that, and I know how crazy that sounds. But the first experience I had with this was with my own sister, who was a crackhead for 15 years. And I got a t-shirt, put it on the altar, doing a revival. The next time I saw her, I said, I got some for you. I gave her the t-shirt. She wore that t-shirt back to the crack house and when she got in the crack house and started smoking crack everybody in the crack house started screaming and they said you got to get out of here because you got eyes on your shirt y'all ain't hearing that my sister had been to rehab nine times and couldn't break the habit but the holy ghost broke the habit she never went to rehab 
she never went back and now she's a prophet of God preaching the gospel I'm telling you it's time for your relatives to come into the destiny that God has ordained for them and all the Lord needs is an intercessor anybody feel like being an intercessor Lord Abasha, if you only believe give God a praise today that was a weak praise that was a weak praise when I said give God a praise it's like being at a baseball game before the family get there they don't know where you sitting at when they walk in the auditorium there you go baby I see somebody you wave your hand and you say over here and they look up and see you waving they said oh that she is right there now I'm gonna try that one more time I said if you believe God make the Holy Ghost say that she is right there that he is right there there's a new saying said I see you I see you That just took me out of here for a minute. Y'all can take y'all seats. The Spirit of the Lord not only operates in the Spirit, but the Spirit of the Lord, though its operation is in the Spirit, its manifestation is in the flesh. The Spirit of God is a divine intelligence. I was reading something today that I want to read with you that the Lord started on last night. And over in the middle of the night, I know for a fact that somebody's mind received the miracle last night. I fought demon spirits almost all night, Bishop. Came in the room, jumping on top of me. And I told the devil, you can jump all you want to. Because you're an indication that you're mad about something. And if you was in this building last night or watching by television, I'm telling you right now, the Lord gave your mind a miracle. So the text reads as follows. Later on, the first verse later on there was a Jewish festival feast for which Jesus went up to Jerusalem now there is in Jerusalem a pool near the sheep gate this pool in the Hebrew is called Bethesda having five porches coals colonnades doorways in these lay a great sick number of sick folk, some blind, some crippled, and some paralyzed, shriveled up, waiting for the bubbling up of the water. For an angel of the Lord went down at appointed season into the pool and moved and stirred up the water whoever then first after the stirring up of the water stepped in was cured of whatever disease with which he was afflicted there was a certain man there who had suffered with a deep seated and lingering disorder for 38 years when Jesus noticed him lying there helpless 
knowing that he had already been a long time in that condition. He said to him, do you want to become well? This is the part that got me. Are you really earnest about getting well? The invalid answered, Sir, I have nobody when the water is moving to put me into the pool. But while I am trying to come into it myself, myself, while I'm trying to fix it myself, While I'm trying to, while I'm trying to straighten out my children myself. What does that mean? While I'm trying to do it without you. While I'm trying to do it myself somebody else steps down ahead of me Jesus said to him get up pick up your bed sleeping pad and walk instantly you know what I love about this text there isn't even a word that says and there isn't a word that says then it just went from pick up your bed and walk to the word instantly. Which means this time, if you're in this building, when God do it, it ain't going to be no interceptors. He said, I don't need a conjunction to what I'm trying to say. I don't need anything else to be connected to what I'm about to do. I'm going to speak it and then instantly. Okay, okay. Okay, I see right now we ain't got no faith people in here tonight. I said instantly. I said instantly. You know, I took the privilege. I took the privilege of looking up that word. Looking up that word instantly. Bishop, and the word instantly means in a minute. He said, look up minute. Minute said 60 seconds. I said, God, what are you trying to say? He said, when I speak something to you, you got 60 seconds to respond to it. See, the problem, the problem is... The reason why the enemy gets involved in it is because you hesitate after the Lord has spoken it. Your job is not to do it, but your job is to make sure that between what God says and what God does, there is no interruption. And the way that you don't allow interruption to come in, soon as God said, you got to praise him. You ain't hearing that? Ooh, y'all sit down, y'all sit down, y'all sit down. Instantly, the man became well and recovered his strength and picked up his bed and walked. Instantly, the man became well and recovered his strength and picked up his bed and walked. But that happened on the Sabbath, y'all like today. So the Jews kept saying to the man who, has, who had been healed, it is a Sabbath and you have no right to pick up your bed. It is not lawful. He answered them, the man, <laughs> the man who healed me and gave me back my strength, he himself said to me, pick up your bed and walk. And they asked him, who is the man? Who told you? Pick up your bed and walk. I'm going to stop the text right there. 
Do you want to be made whole? That's what that's 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 the question. Do you want to be made whole? See, I'm not talking about see when we say when we say the word yes, I want to be made whole. Then if we don't know the full definition of what that means, then we will be settling for partial relief, calling that wholeness. Whole derives from a Greek word which means holism. So I think it's really peculiar that W-H-O-L-E is derived from H-O-L-I-S-M hmm. mean whole and entire whole and entire so now I understand Bishop where we get the word holy oh my God Holy, because we can hear this. We can we can either think that holy holiness is when something appears in the atmosphere and feels that way, but that's not who God is. Holiness means there's nothing missing. Nothing missing and nothing broken. In other words, God is in his being of entirety, mother. Whatever you could possibly think of in your mind, that's what he consists of. And so, watch this, because he is holy and he is complete. When he looks at us, he knows what is missing. Because I made you in my image. And so when I say, be ye holy, for I am holy, that means no part of your life should be missing. Holy don't mean a white dress. Holy don't mean don't wear makeup. I'm not hearing y'all. When you're not holy, it's because you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not walking in the completeness of God. In your mind, in your spirit, in your intellect, in your finances. I'm not hearing y'all. In your physical body. I'm not hearing y'all. And everything that came from your body, your children. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. No, the Lord doesn't want us to be in the body of Christ praising God fragmented. With every part that we really need to be whole is missing. So I got to ask again, is there anybody that want to be made whole? When I looked up the word holism, it said, since that holism was a representation of all of the wholenesses in the universe. Wait a minute. So now we have what they call whole foods. <laughs> Sis, go with me right here, right there in that gray dress. They said whole foods. Because what the world is trying to sell us is eating the right way but dying the wrong way. See, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. The world got us eating better but it don't have us living better. Somebody better say something up in here. So the world wants us to be more interested in our diet than our appetite. I'm not hearing y'all. The world wants you to be more interested in how you feed the physical body. 
rather than how you feed the spiritual body. And so because of that, we are walking around as Christians bankrupt in our spirit. We have no spiritual currency. I'm not hearing y'all. We praise and God broke in our spirit. How do you know when you're broken your spirit? Because you, I'm not talking about Bishop Jackson. I'm not talking about Prophetess Bynum. I'm talking about you should have the power to speak things into existence. Why? Because I am the sum total of what I am speaking. What I am calling to be made manifest. I'm calling that not from a place but from within a place. It's already in me. Y'all, y'all. Uh, 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 uh. It's already, it's already in me. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Jesus was able to heal that man because healing was in him. Okay. I can't get y'all to say that. He was able to open up the blinded eyes because he was the vision. He was able, you don't hear me, you, 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 uh, you're not listening, you're not listening. He was able to speak uh, and turn water into wine because he had that ability. Because all things were made by him, from him, and through him, and for him. I'm not hearing y'all. And so when he says, when I, Jesus, have a need, since all things I made for me, through me, come on somebody, and by me, then when I get to the fig tree, and ain't nothing there to eat, don't turn around and tell me what season it is. Because that's why he got mad at the fig tree. He said, because you didn't come into existence back in Genesis, because somebody planted you. You came into existence because I spoke you into existence so now when I say feed me don't tell me what the season is in the earth realm somebody said well maybe you ain't healed and maybe you not delivered because it ain't your time tell that person it's my time right now no I'm not hearing y'all say that like you mean that I said, tell that person, it's my time right now. And so when we look at this text, I want you to see something that God wrote this morning when I got in the back. That's going to bless you. He said, now, when there is a, you know, people think about this. Whenever... You go to the doctor and you say, I'm sick. And they said, let me take your vitals. Let me see how your heart beating. Let me see how your lungs is operating. Then they say, we got to take your blood so we can see what's really wrong with you. <laughs> Lord Jesus, because the blood is the life watch this this is what he gave me now I, I, it's the life and the intelligent system of the body the blood has a voice the blood is identification whatever is going to work in your body and in your mind the blood has to speak to it and tell it to move and tell it which way to move y'all got to see this the blood is so powerful oh my god until when abel slew his brother the body was dead but the blood kept speaking somebody said well, how did, how did God know that, that, that Cain was dead? Because the blood stopped speaking to his body. And now the ground, that ocean, was the blood source. And God looked up and said, there's something wrong with this. Because I put blood in him to operate a body, not to operate the ground. Y'all ain't saying that. 
So even while you sitting in this room and watching my television, whatever is wrong with you, your blood is speaking to heaven. No, I'm not here. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Your DNA is talking to God right now. I, I, I can't get nobody to see that. Now, now I'm, I'm going to say that one more time for you to get this. I said, whatever is wrong with your body that you don't even know is wrong with your body, your blood is already talking. God, I don't know shit that they be here. Somebody said, well, 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 Dr. Barton, what is your proof? Well, you don't have a need uh, to be in the house of God unless you got a need. I'm, I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. And so when you came in here today, it wasn't because of flyer jewelry here. It wasn't because of television commercial jewelry here. It was because there's something wrong. Hold up, my son. There's something wrong in your body, in your mind. But wait, but wait, but wait. Not only is there something wrong, there's something that God said to me I'm going to fix it today I'm going to fix it today wait 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 now let me tell you something if you sit next to somebody today and you ain't heard nothing out of them since you sat down. You sitting next to the Antichrist. Because the Jews said, when are you going to tell us whether or not you be the Messiah? And he said, if you don't know by now that I'm the Messiah, it's because you ain't mine. He said, for mine know my voice. Mine know who I am. Who am I talking to? Lord, I'm going to say that one more time. God said he brought you in here because he's going to fix it today. Let me tell you watching my television. God said he brought you in here because he's going to fix your body, your mind, your spirit today. Sit down. Yo, 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 yo. Y'all sit down for a second. Sit down for a second. Today. Today. I'm giving you a blood transfusion right now. Today. Somebody, somebody said what? Why is that important? Why is that important? See, let me help you with something. There is no such thing now in, well, yeah, mama, I, I, I go to church with you today. No, no such thing. No deep-seated sinner that's taken over by the true seduction of sin would agree with nobody to come in the presence of the Lord unless you were born to be a divine spirit. You keep, you keep going to church and you keep calling on God when you get in trouble because that's your real nature. That's your real bloodline. So you like a person that goes to the hospital and you're sick and you need a blood transfusion and you blood type A and they give you O. And it almost kills you. And so the reason why we are, we are seated here today with deep-seated disorders and sicknesses because somebody done crossed our blood no i'm not here nobody talk to me i'm not here nobody talk to me we sick today because the enemy has crossed our blood we all y'all we're depressed today because something is going on in the blood see see we're like that man we're like the man 
Amen. That was at the pool. See, what God showed me at about 4 o'clock this morning, Bishop, is that, listen, the man, watch this, he wanted relief. He didn't want revelation. Heal me. I want to be healed. I want to be healed, not made whole. So we got people coming to church because they want to be, watch this, they want to be healed, but they don't want to be made whole. Because, because if I heal you and you're not completely made whole by the blood of Jesus Christ, the sickness is coming back. The disorder is coming back. I'm not hearing y'all. Who am I talking to right now? You got that, didn't you? You got that, baby, didn't you? He said, he said, who healed, listen, who healed you? That thing got me so major to, I was, I was turning over in my bed. He said, who healed you? He said, the man. <laughs> you come to church and said, Bishop, lay hands on me because I, they found a lump. But who healed you? The man. The man been sick for 38 years laying by the pool. Which means, let me give you a revelation, he was sick like that before Jesus got there. He was sick like that before Jesus was born. Watch this. Who healed you? The man. How did you get healed like this? The man. I believe in my spirit, Lynn, Jesus heard his comment. And said, this is the last person that's going to talk about the man healing. He said, because if I heal you, my healing come with a responsibility. Because now I'm going to come find you. And you're going to get to know me. <laughs> oh, come on here, somebody. Now, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to find you. You wonder why God won't leave you alone. He said, because I'm not in the business in this last hour of constantly healing. And you don't know who I am. I'm not in the business of, you don't hear me, of constantly giving you a new report from the doctor. And you don't want to serve me. You don't hear me. It's time for a blood transfusion. Who am I talking to right now? No! It's time to be saved with your healing. I can't get nobody to praise him right there. The praise just got low right there. The praise just got low right there. Because we're living in the generation that wants relief. They don't want revelation. They don't want a change of lifestyle. They just want to say, I know the man. Yo, yo, y'all sit down. Mm -mm, he told me to walk through this today. He told me to walk through this today. Just like that woman. When Jesus got up from the grave. He won't let me leave that alone, Dr. Beverly. The woman got up, went to the grave, saw Jesus was risen. Here come her disciples. Looked in the grave. Yeah, he up. They were satisfied with a resurrection. But she stayed at the tomb because she wanted a revelation. Some of y'all is satisfied with just coming to church. But there's somebody in here that said, I want a revelation. Because it's got to be more to this than the praise team. It's got to be more to this than a message. It's got to be more to this than a dance and a shout. I need a revelation of who's talking to me. I need a revelation of who I'm talking to. Who am I talking to? Who am I preaching to today? I just don't want to be touched. I just don't want to be healed. I want to be made whole. And the way that I'm made whole, I've got to have the blood of Jesus Christ applied to my life. The 
the blood. Watch this. That's why the disease, when it comes down your street, that's why it don't pass you over. Because it don't see the blood. See, I'm not hearing nobody preach back to me right there. I don't hear nobody preach back. That's when the disorder, the demon of disorder, come to try to hit your house. The reason why it don't keep passing, because it don't see the blood. But today, the Holy Ghost speaks in the atmosphere. It's time to apply the blood. Wait, wait, wait. Y'all sit down, because I got to look at some of y'all today. He told me to walk this floor today. He told me to walk this floor today. He said walk the floor and look at everybody who been touched but you ain't never been saved for real. He said come on look at the people that don't mind praising God but they mind when it come to living for God. Hold up Ashanda. He said what's going to drop in the house today is the spirit of conviction again what's gonna drop uh, is a spirit of conviction where you can't just do what you want to do anymore who am I talking to oh, I can't get nobody Liam bring me my socks can't get nobody can't get nobody to talk to me people live like they people live like they want to live because he told me to lay hands today uh-huh people live like they want to live and hold our shanda yeah but you can't do it like that no more because the blood is for the remission now I, see, see 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 we too churchy we so we so churchy until we don't know what that means remission the blood is for the remission of sin <laughs> Remission. Remission. But Dr. Bynum, I just want you to call me out. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Well, I just want to, I just want somebody to just prophesy to me. I want to be excited about a word, but I don't know how to be excited about my worth. And that, And the reason why the devil keeps crashing your life is because he know you're worth something. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. The reason why the devil keeps trying to crash your life is because he knows that you are carrying the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you're carrying that, then you possess the power of self-resurrection. Which means when I get down, I can lift myself up. That's why the Bible... Oh, y'all ain't hearing it. Physician heal thyself because of the blood. I got the power. I know some of y'all. Some of y'all can't praise him. Some of y'all can't praise him. You can't praise him for what you did last night. You can't praise him before how you've been living all week. I understand that. But today, there's going to be a bloodbath in here. Today. There's going to be a blood washing in here today. Oh. Oh. Remi you know what? You know what's sad? I said this to my to some of my staff last night. I got in the room, went to bed. They were coming in and fixing up some stuff. And I raised up in the bed. I said, you know what's sad? They said, what Dr. Bonham? I said, do you know people don't say no more, I'm saved. Okay. Do you know people don't use the terminology I'm sanctified okay do you know people don't say stuff like I'm saving 
sanctified filled with the Holy Ghost I know that it's called the Holy Spirit but that's the word we use to water down the fact that it ain't supposed to give you power I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. We done went from being saved to Christians. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. But I hear the Holy Ghost saying that there's a whirlwind that's about to come back in the church. I hear the Holy Ghost saying that somebody is thirsty. Somebody is hungry. Somebody is in church. Somebody want to make sure that my anchor holds and grips a solid rock. And that rock is Jesus. Remission. With, with your sick, disorderly, unorganized, deep-seated issues. Praising God. The only glory that God gets it's when his word do something. He don't get no glory because you saying, thank you Jesus. He get glory because your thank you Jesus is the result of something that his word did. See, I'm not hearing y'all. That's why you go in some churches and they praise and worship is as dry as baby powder. I'm not hearing y'all talk. That's why you don't feel nothing. It's beautiful. It's organized. You got the best musicians. Let me tell you something. Five years, the Lord asked me to pastor. And I did. And I came in church one Sunday. And the worship team was there. I hired the best musicians. I hired one of the number one leading worship leaders in Atlanta. Everything was just perfect. I walked in church one Sunday morning and it sounded like a bunch of noise. Like a bunch of rattle. And I said, God, what is this? He said, it's noise. Because ain't nobody purified. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Y'all, y'all, look, look, look. Don't shoot the mailman. I'm just a messenger. The Holy Ghost is calling up for purification back in your life. And the only way you're going to get it, the blood of Jesus got to go back through your system from the top of your head to the soul of your feet and baptize you again. Who am I? Y'all looking at me. Anybody want to be made whole? Remission. Remission. The cancellation, wait a minute, of debt. Wait, the cancellation of debt. The cancellation of a charge or a penalty. Wait a minute. The diminution of the seriousness or intensity of disease or pain. The blood is a remission, a cancellation of the debt, the charge, and the pain that comes from a sickness. So when the blood becomes the remission for my sin. It cancels my debt. It, it gets you out of financial trouble. No, 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 I don't know. I'm going to say it again. When I let the blood cancel my sin, it cancels my debt. It cancels my charge. It cancels my penalty. And I am relieved from the pain of the sickness. Nothing can stay. Nothing. Y'all ain't hearing this. You're not hearing this. It's not supposed to still be in your body. 
You don't hear me. That's when you can tell the devil you are a liar and the truth is not in you because the blood. Wait. And I'm closing with this. Diminution. 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 Here it is, Bishop. A reduction in the size, in the extent, and the importance. When the blood is applied, the size of the tumor shrinks. The extent of how long it's supposed to stay is shortened. I can't get nobody to talk to me. When the blood is applied, watch this. The size of the problem that you're standing in, it starts to shrink. And who that can't shoot that in it, say, it's sick and tell I'm a catch it. It's sick and get out of the shot. I don't set that in it. See, that's why I know what I'm talking about. Right now, you may have walked in here with a problem, but while your hands is up, it's shrinking. You don't hear me. You may have walked in here with a situation, but while you praising God, it's shrinking. And the devil said you wasn't gonna never come out, but the extent of how long it can stay is being shortened right now because of the blood. Say. I want y'all sit down because I need to see you when I as I close this statement. I want the healing from the blood but I don't want the deliverance from the blood I want Jesus to become my healer but not my savior let, let me let me just say this while I close this. For 38 years, the man remained paralyzed. The withered hand man remained with it. One was waiting on water, and the other one came to hear the word. His healing wasn't his priority hearing the word was right. who is God I'm gonna ask it like this cuz I ain't got time to play no games you understand what I'm saying I can't fix it up for you they said but why she have to say it like that well let me help you with something you live with Buki while he beats you and you still stayed you go in bars and discos where they cuss you out and you go back next week to party again. So don't come to church being all sensitive. Don't come to church acting like everything got to be tender because you don't even live a tender life. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I just got to keep it 100 and say it like it is. So who is God rebuking in here today? Because you've been walking your hips in the sanctuary every week. But you won't yield your life to God. You won't give him your mind. You won't give him your heart. Somebody said, well, I come to church. No, that's your body. And he said, I have already presented a body for the sacrifice. I need your heart on this altar. A church around the world full of bodies that's missing hearts. So the only way that I can say this to you is the only way that God has given it to me.
today, the Lord is saying, get saved. Come on this side. Come on this side. He's saying, get saved. And he, he ain't saying, he ain't saying walk to the altar let somebody hand you a track and a new Bible tell you to bow your head and say after me Father God Father God come into my life come into my life save me Save me. Forgive me for all my sin. Forgive me for all my sin. I receive it by faith. I receive it by faith. Amen. Amen. And just like that, just like that, I'm going to say something. Just like that. Wasn't no spirit. Wasn't no anointing. Because just the words can't save you. But it's when the spirit make connection with your heart. So I take you back to the text. When Jesus asked the man, do you really want to be healed? He said, are you honest about it? Are you serious about it? Because if you're serious about it, it won't just be one word and one sentence. You would put your hips on the altar and you would stay on the altar until you make contact with God in your spirit the song said and I close is your all on the altar A sacrifice link. Does your heart, is your heart is what the spirit controls. Because you can only be blessed. You ain't going to never have no peace. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest. When you yield him, your body and your soul. The book of Ezekiel said, there will be no more bringing pillows into the sanctuary for the elbows of the people to make you comfortable. Church is not supposed to make you comfortable. It's to make you get right. Oh, Today, play that is your all on the altar. I didn't say sing. I didn't say sing. I said play. Because that's what's wrong. Too many voices. I'm going to say it to you like this. Get yourself to this altar because you know you ain't saved. Step to this altar, cause you know you ain't saved for real. Come now, for the Spirit of God is calling you. Come now, the Spirit is crying out. Forget about your title. Forget about I'm a preacher. Forget about I'm an evangelist. I need to plug. I need to plug. Forget about you a prophet. I need to plug. 
I break every spirit of perversion. I break it 
up upon me. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. Be made whole. seat was and where the blood applied and God spoke to Moses sister Karen and said you go tell Aaron don't just walk in here when he feel like it lest the power of God strike him and kill him that's when the Lord made it crucial to me that y'all are a generation that think you can just come into the most holy place whenever you feel like it. But you can't come until he called you. You can't come unless, watch this, he minimizes his presence so you don't die try, trying to come. But I heard the Lord say, I'm not going to keep calling you. And this may be your last time. I just heard that in the spirit. This may be your last time. You're crying because he's calling your spirit. You're weeping because he's tearing your soul away from the spirit of darkness. I just, I just heard the Lord say this moment right here, this moment right here baby, this moment right here, the most important moment in your life. See, I'm sorry, and I don't believe the lies that the millennials don't want Jesus. I believe that the millennials don't want fake because I see the power of God on your life. He cannot. Shiva babo say. Shiva babo sate. Kota. Shuku seke. Shuka seke. Soko seka basi. Shiva babo seka basi. Kushaka seke. 
Move of God tonight in this building. A move of God. If you don't want to move of God, don't come back. Did it ever? But I hear the Lord say, if you ain't in a position to pray for nobody, bring your own t-shirt. If you ain't in a position to cry out to nobody, bring your own blouse and put it on the altar. Because that divine and what I don't want is released. I want a revelation. I want a point of contact from this day to let me know that what has happened in me is not temporary, but it's eternal. So that it is. Turn around and tell your neighbor, I just got saved. Turn around and tell somebody else, I just got saved. And if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, then I'm seeking for the Holy Ghost. around and tell one more person the Lord really saved me today tell them I came back to God tell them watch this that the blood is the representation of a marriage tell somebody I just renewed my vows turn around and tell your neighbor that I just renewed my vows Tell your neighbor, tell another neighbor, I just renewed my power. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Hold on. Now 
I got to take it back to old school. I know we just said I just renewed my vows, but I hear my grandmother in my back. Turn around and tell your neighbor, I made a vow to the Lord and I won't take it back. <laughs> hey, tell your neighbor, I made a vow to the Lord. Tonight at 7 o'clock When you come in the door Walk straight To this altar And lay your shirt When you come in the door Don't stop in the hallway Doing a lot of chit chat Cause on your way to church Your focus While that shirt was in the car with you had on it what you wanted God to do. Don't mix it with save me a sandwich. Don't let out a piece and be gone when the church left. Forget all of that. Come straight to the altar and lay your shirt on the altar and keep a divine connection with what you asking God to do. And I promise you, He's gonna do it. I promise you. I promise you. God gave me an assignment I didn't come here to do all of this I came we ain't said nothing about impact I think that's what I came for I'm sorry y'all welcome to the impact network <laughs> Forgive us. But we are a network that was erected in the world for such a time as this to impact the world. All over this building, God gave me a word yesterday. I sat down with Bishop and he could tell you and testify to this. That in my sabbatical with God, the Lord showed up and Bishop can testify that I had at least seven or eight experiences week after week. And this is the only way I can tell you how it was to keep it short for such another time. That's what God is getting ready to do. But I would go out on the balcony and the sky would start coming toward me till I wanted to back up against the glass doors. And the Lord would say to me, I'm talking to you. And when he got through speaking, he would say, get your camera. And I would take a picture. And the clear manifestation of the Lord was in the pictures. And one picture particular was the father I was reading and being empowered about the blood of Jesus and the sacrifice and I read the part about how God would require in the Old Testament that they would get a lamb and bring it in the house for four days an innocent baby white lamb and they would bond with it and take care of it and feed it. And then four days later, Adrian, they had to walk that lamb to the sacrifice and watch him get his throat slit, knowing that the lamb had done nothing wrong. And when I heard about the sacrifice, it became so real to me in that room. I looked up and the sky came toward me. And when I took the picture, 
There was an image of the father holding the baby. Am I lying, Bishop? The image of the father sitting holding the baby on his lap. And then he said, take another picture. And when I took it, the image of the father offering up the sacrifice turned into smoke. He said, I'm talking to you. I have picture after picture after picture. Because he said, I brought you into the kingdom and I kept you into the kingdom for such a time as this. Everything you went through was my divine plan. He said, it was my will that I take you out of the world system so I can put you in another system. So I can take you out of reality and put you over in revelation. And now my eyes have been opened and I can plainly see my Abba Father. I know who Jesus is. Can I seek him? I met him. I've had many visitations. Why am I saying this? Because I can't afford, like so many others, to preach my own message. I can't afford to say or do anything that the Father is not telling me to do. He said, because you are the end time resurrection. He said, you died in that trial. The old one needed his day. That one was for the people. This one is for me. Oh, ba sheke bosa, hera ba sike de na nansha ya, ina na nansha de 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 sanda ya. Hey, oh de na nansha shenda de me he say. The old one, the people said, "Well done." The new one, God got to say, "Well done." I forgot to show you this one, Bishop. The my last day I stepped out on the balcony when I was through doing what God told me to do for two months and I said are you pleased the sky started coming to me he said get your camera and I took the picture and I showed it to both of my assistants and there was the face of Jesus in the clouds and he said to me yes I am so I'm hearing from another place and tell me something I know it's real he said, the minds of the people that have heard this word have been made whole. Oh, God. See, you praising God from a minimum. But not only have your mind been made whole, but everybody that's connected to you is coming out. You better get God praise up in this building. You better get God praise up in this building. Everybody that's connected to you, every child that you have, every grandson, every niece and nephew, you can praise him. You can praise him for the prosperity of your family. Everybody is coming out. Oh, you got to praise him because the Bible said that when Paul and Simon began to praise him, the prisoners heard them and they all went free. You got to give God a praise today. Everybody is going free. Nobody left behind. No! Ba 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 ba!
I got to go. He gave me a word. That 33 people were to offer the Lord a sacrifice. Somebody said, but that's an offering. But the Lord said in the scripture that wheresoever a man's treasure is, there also lies his heart. Now I know why people are shrinking back their hand from the temple. And the hand can't move. Because when the heart is not lying with God, then there is no treasure. But wherever my treasure is, that's where my heart is. So let me just say this to you simply. I told y'all I gotta keep the 100. You know, mothers are younger every day. 12 year old mamas, 13 year old, so I'm a young mama. So I gotta keep the 100. Look in your checkbook and you'll see where your heart is. When you keep on seeing the nail salon and you keep on seeing the beauty shop and every now and then you see the house of God, now you know what your heart is. When you open up your closet and you got so many clothes that you don't have room for them, now you know where your heart is. Tonight, I'm finishing up a very important part of that text. And I have to help you to understand tonight why the presence of God is not an emergency. It's not an emergency but it's preventive. Yeah. All right. I live in that presence to prevent. I don't run to that presence only in an emergency. And so most of us as Christians, we live emergency lives. We don't know how to walk in the life of prevention. We don't know how to say to people, that's not coming over here because I've been with the Lord. I say what's going to cross over here. I determine what my child is going to be. I determine where my life is going to end up. And how do I know that? Because I've been in the presence of the Lord. all over this building. He said 33 people in this meeting would sow a sacrificial seed because I'm telling you to. Because he said last night that I had to diminish the army of Gideon. I had to take him down to take him up. Sometimes we waiting on God to tell us to do the big thing. But it's the small foxes that spoil the vine. 